corner positioners give us the ability to apply the proper perspective to our digital assets and projection mapping shows. Today we are going to wrap up our work on corner pinning by looking at how we can stitch our corner pins together in order to create a cohesive look across the entire home. Previously we looked at how to create the filters for different sections of a home. These filters would work just fine if we kept our assets contained to those specific sections and did not try to create movement. However, if we want a character to move across the structure, then we will have to create one more set of filters in order to properly align and size our digital assets, so that they stitch together seamlessly. Let's pick up on the Fusion page, and start by doing a little bit of cleanup. In the last video in this series we discussed testing, tuning, and backing up your corner pin filters. If you've done that, and you're confident in the filters you created, you can remove the grid nodes from your Fusion tree limbs. Just select each node and hit the delete key on your keyboard to remove them. You can also remove any media you used for that testing, but you will need something to use to set up the stitching filter, so it's probably best to keep them in the media pool for now, so you can use them again if needed. The nodes pane now contains only our fusion tree, and the corner pin filters. Even though the corner pin filters work, they are likely sized and positioned differently from each other in some way. We can fix that, by adding a transform node, right before the corner pin filters. Select each background node anchoring the limb, and add a transform node from the tool menu. Move this node directly in front of the corner positioner nodes for each limb. You will also need to add a merge node to each limb, so that we can add media branches to use for aligning our asset stitching. If it helps, you can rename each of these nodes similar to how we named each of the corner pin filters. Bring any media down onto the node's pane. Let's also connect this to a transform node. So that you don't get confused, this transform node is only meant to control the size and movement of this digital asset. It is not at all related to the transform nodes we placed in front of the corner pin filters. Recall from an earlier video that we pointed out how a fusion node can be connected to more than one node. So, let's connect this branch we've created to the merge node on each of our tree limbs. If we stick with our fusion tree analogy, then we would probably consider this a vine. Vines have the ability to climb trees and connect themselves to multiple tree limbs. We are doing something similar here, in that we are taking one media node and connecting it to all of our fusion limbs. This is different from a branch, which we would connect to one tree limb only. With our vine connected to each limb, we can clearly see how the media appears differently on each section, due to the corner pin filters. Let's work on stitching this together, so that it will appear as one cohesive image that forms correctly to the structure. To do this, I like to use media that I'm able to split in the middle. In this example, because I'm using a video, I'll scrub through the timeline to find a frame where the character I want to use for alignment can be cleanly cut in half. You could easily do this with a simple image if you wanted, and you'll get the same result I do. Just make sure it's something that can be divided in half quite easily. If your asset is not appearing within your masked sections, bring it down a bit using the transform node that the media itself is connected to. Don't use the ones in front of the corner pin filter. Since I really like using this guy on the left, I'll flip him, using the transform node he is connected to. To flip the image, select the transform node. Then in the inspector, select this icon to flip the image. Move the character you are using for alignment over, so that it appears to be split in half. We are now ready to start our alignments. First, we must designate one tree limb to be the one that all others true up to. Here, I'm going to choose the garage side limb. This means I will not make any modifications to this transform node. In fact, I could remove it if I really wanted to, but I'll leave it there for now. This means that the next limb is the one I will want to modify, in order to start stitching these images together. Select the transform node on the middle limb, and then using the center properties, move the right side of the media, as close as possible to the left side. Remember that you can make fine-tuned adjustments to these values by clicking into their text box and holding down your left mouse button. Then when the double arrows appear, move your mouse left or right to bring the values up and down. Use the same technique on the size property to increase or decrease the size of the media. Continue to make these adjustments back and forth until the image appears to be matched up correctly. If you're using a video, 
you can scrub through the timeline a bit to ensure the media is still stitched together correctly. Make additional adjustments if needed. When you're satisfied with your first stitching, use the transform node the media is plugged into, and split the character again, between the next set of surfaces. Just like before, use the stitching node on the next limb, and adjust both the size and placement, in order to align each half of the character. Check to see if you need to make any adjustments, and fix accordingly. If there's a small blip in a frame or two, don't fret too much about that. It's likely the video will be moving too quickly for anyone but yourself to notice. Once you believe you've got it, test with different pieces of media if you want. If you would like to validate movement across the home, choose a starting frame on the timeline. Frame 0 is the easiest of course. Select the transform node for your media asset, and move it over to one side. You can see here that the media is no longer covering up our colored background. Don't panic about this. In an upcoming video, we will be building a simple show, and will be eliminating that problem. For now, it's not important. With the transform node still selected, click on this diamond icon next to the center property values. This will set a starting keyframe for our simple animation. Next, find a frame that you want your movement to be completed by. In this example, I'll open the media node in preview pane 1 by selecting it and hitting the number 1 on my keyboard, and then clicking on this icon here so I can see both preview panes at once. When this little ghost gets to this point, I want him to appear over the garage area. Using the transform node, move the media over until the ghost is now placed over the left side of the home. This will automatically set a new keyframe for us. Let's rewind to the beginning of the timeline and play this back. Notice that the playback is a little slow. If you have a lower powered machine, previewing playback in Fusion is not the greatest. That's fine for now. You might just want to scrub through the timeline instead to make sure the asset is moving across correctly. If the preview looks as though it is working, then it's highly likely it will work on the home as well when properly rendered and played back. If you would like to perform a live test of this, it wouldn't hurt to be extra sure, but you would probably want to render this out first and play it back as an individual video especially if you have a lower-powered computer. Everything appears to be working here. You might want to test it with several pieces of media, and then if you feel good about it, it would probably be a smart idea to back up these transform nodes, along with your corner pin filters, so that you can easily get them back if needed. Also remember to copy these filters to other sections of the home that exist on this layer. For example, the garage door will be on this layer, and it is located on the left-hand side of the home, so I will need to copy the filters for that left side, to the same limb that will be used for garage door displays. With all of this completed, we are almost ready to start building a simple show. In the next video, we will cover a bit of cleanup and organizing, then we will move on to how we can use this template to build a simple show for display. We are almost done with the hard stuff. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can remain up to date on the latest videos on using Resolve to build out your home projection shows.